Hello, it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here today to do my week of reading review. Had a really good week. I uh, hope you did too. I read four books. Uh, three of them I think were exceptional and one was pretty good. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm quite pleased. Let's jump to it, okay? The first uh, that I completed was Heavy, an American memoir by Kiesi Lehman. Uh, I did a review of this uh, that I posted last night. I'll link to it below. I found this an incredibly thoughtful, thought-provoking memoir. And I said that I thought that a subtitle, additional subtitle could be deep because there's so many layers. There's so many things to discuss and so many things to ponder. So highly recommended. Next up, uh, I had my first Bernard Cornwell. So I've never read any of his work. Uh, this is Fools and Mortals. And this was set in Edwardian London. And I think I've mentioned before, but I am a sucker for when a real life person of history is in, intersected into a or interjected into a story as a character. So this is uh, really centers the story around uh, Richard Shakespeare, who is the younger brother of William Shakespeare. And this, funnily enough, uh, this is a book that my husband picked out when we were in L London last in my favorite bookstore. He, my husband has become a reader. Thank you. Uh, after 18 years of marriage, he finally has gotten the bug too and now is interested in reading himself. Uh, I think he was drawn to this because he really enjoyed The Alienist, which really unlocked a lot for him in terms of the combination of a really great plot, uh, really interesting details, and a different time period. So I think he thought that this one might be something that was similar. But when he saw Shakespeare as a title, I think I think that kind of uh, soured him a little bit from it. But his loss is my gain because I really enjoyed it. So I would love to know, have you read any other Bernard Cornwell, any that you would recommend that I try? And also anything from the Edwardian um, period. I would love to try something in there. I, I don't know that I've read a lot of Edwardian um, books before. So this, would, this was a, a, a delight. Uh, then Aussie April goodness has continued into May. Um, so Jane Harper is a new favorite, someone I discovered from Aussie April. So uh, thank you very much to Doris at Aldi Books and Jacqueline from Six Minutes With Me for, for uh, starting and kicking off Aussie April, which gave me the prompt and interest in looking into Australian authors uh, because I otherwise probably would not have picked up Jane Harper. Uh, what I love about Jane Harper's writing is that she has a sense of place that is so strong, you really feel that you're there. And her sense, her place that she discusses a lot in her books is Australia, and a lot of it is in the outback. And so you get this uh, wonderful way to travel there without having to leave or go on that horribly long flight from the United States, uh, which one day I will do, by the way, I will, I will come to Australia, I'm, even more so now that I'm reading all this amazing Australian literature. Uh, but she also does character in a great way and plot is unbelievable too. She, she is really the full, the full spectrum. Uh, so if you like Tana French as an example, I think you would really like Jane Harper. Uh, she is going to be an auto read for me uh, moving forward, I can tell already. I think I may have completed her her current works. So this will be the third one I've read. I need to do some investigation. Um, but if you have any suggestions of anyone who's similar to Jane Harper in the sense of writing a mystery thriller that is uh, good characters, good sense of place, and, uh, and good plotting, uh, please let me know because I would be very interested in finding out those recommendations. And then lastly, so those were my three really exceptional reads. Uh, last, uh, I read another Lindsay Davis. So this is the Flavia Alba series. This is the second one called Enemies at Home. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was a light romp, but I don't know why. <laughs> so I, I said this when I, when I, when I read the first one, uh, that I was heavy side eye. There were a lot of things that just felt too modern about it. Well, the same thing is true. I should have known. Um, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. Uh, so let's go into what I'm what's currently on deck. Uh, 
So as a nice counterpoint to the Flavia Alba series was uh, a recommendation that I received. I can't remember if it was on, I think it was on Litzy, uh, for Colin, Colleen McCullough. So the, someone said, have you ever read any Colleen McCullough? And I thought, and I, I didn't think I had. Sure enough, I haven't. Uh, I think she wrote The Thornbirds is, is, is her claim to fame. So I checked, uh, I checked and to see what was in my library, and sure enough, uh, First Man in Rome was available. So I've downloaded the audiobook and I'm listening to it. And just from the first, from the first little bits of it, you could just tell it, I, it was a different level. The voice and tone, uh, the verbiage that was used, uh, the details just elevated. You could tell that I'm listening to a different type of book. Uh, so I feel a little bit more confident in the uh, details and the historical truths that are coming in this book than I did the Lindsay Davis series. Um, you know, no shade on Lindsay Davis. That was a fun book. Uh, this feels a little more appropriate, richer, maybe richer. Maybe that's the right way to say it. So really looking forward to uh, continuing on with that. I'm only about 2% in. Uh, then, uh, next up is the Satapur Moonstone. So this is from Sata, uh, Sujata Macy. I read and loved her Widows of Malabar Hill that, uh, was released maybe last year or the year before. Really, uh, love it's 1920s India. And there's just a melting pot, a mixing of so many different cultures that are happening. And, Su and Sujata Macy is really good at going underneath and talking about women's experiences that coming from these different cultures. So I'm, I'm about 20% into the new book. I'm enjoying it so much so far. Um, I have heard some criticisms that some people didn't like it as much because there's a little love interest. I, you know, I, I'm here for that. That's no, no problem with that. So I'm um, really enjoying it. Looking forward to, uh, to continuing that one. I can't seem to put down. Uh, and in continuation of my love of, of uh, Roman, all things Roman and Italian in advance of my trip, this summer I'm reading La Bella Lingua, my love affair with Italian, the world's most enchanting language by Diane Hales. So this is giving me uh, vibes of a book that I read earlier this year, uh, Dreyer's English by Richard Dreyer, Robert Dreyer. Um, he, Benjamin Dreyer, that's it, Benjamin Dreyer. So he is the chief editor at Random House Publishers. And he wrote a really delightful book. It's a, it's a reference book, but it's so rich with detail and funny and witty and a lot of, a lot of information in there that I can feel myself coming back to. But all, what comes through most is just this love of how idiosyncratic English is and how, how nutty it is to try to, to write in this, in this language. Very similar vibes are coming through with this book. Uh, a lot about, um, just how just different words have different meanings or or um, iterations of the word um, have to have completely different meanings and how fun that is uh, so i'm really loving the playfulness with which she's talking about it and the general joy and exuberance with which she's engaging with the material you could tell this woman loves italian and um and so i'm here for it uh, I, I can guarantee i will not remember uh, the words that she's using but the spirit is coming through uh, then I'm also a very, very barely into Spring by Ally Smith. I need to bump that up because my whole library hold is coming up soon. I think I've got six days, so I will be hitting that one with a with an intensity uh, because I hear it's really good. I hear it's the best of the of the three that she's put out so far. So she's doing a series based on the seasons and she's taking contextually what's going on in the world right now and in interjecting it from a literary perspective. And so I'm really interested in, in reading this one, especially because I enjoyed Autumn very, very much. So if this one is better than Autumn, uh, I'm, I, I should be looking forward to um, some really good material. And then I two that I have on deck but I really didn't touch this week were um, Essential Essays by Audrey and Rich. Uh, I'm going to slowly reach that. I, I'll probably touch on it a little bit this weekend, but expect to see that for a while. 
And the normal people, I probably won't get to until later on next week. I'm going to put that on the back burner so I can be fresh for when I meet uh, next month for our book club. Uh, then, uh, so that's what's literally on deck, what I, at least I've made some progress toward. Uh, then I introduced a new section last week called Mood Reading Roulette. And I took a look at what was, what I was interested in. Maybe I would pick it up, maybe I wouldn't. And I'm very proud to say that two of the five books I actually did pick up. So for me, that's pretty shocking because I don't even like to listen to myself when I put uh, a TBR together. So I was kind of shocked that, that that's how it ran, ended up. So I that the Satipur Moonstone and Spring were two on that list. So I think I'm still going to be interested in uh, Human Acts because I want to read more Asian uh, authors for Asian Readathon. This that's part of this month's uh, uh, Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So I really want to support and um, and get more get a little deeper into uh, into these authors. And I hear this is really great. Uh, also, the um, Sujata Macy books that I already mentioned would count for that. So I am making progress there. And then uh, this one is all over Bookstagram and um, and BookTube. This is The Illumination of Ursula Flight by Anna Marie Crowhurst. And look at how beautiful that book is, huh? Uh, really lovely. Uh, this is supposed to be uh, a really fun book. Oh, the just inside is really beautiful. I have been so steeped in historical mysteries and historical books lately that it'll be nice to read something that's a little more on the fantasy fantasy realm. And I think this is it. This is kind of like a, a restoration period. I don't know. So this, I think, I think this is a, is a mix of, of some historical and, and fantasy elements. So excited for that. Um, if I'm feeling crazy, or if I make make a lot of progress with my Italian books, I might try to grab uh, The Leopard. So I talked about this before last week. So it's still I'm still interested in that. And and this book, the text looks like this. It's a good size. So I think I could probably bang this out pretty, pretty well, especially given the fact that we've got the holiday. But I will say, as my disclaimer is, I'm not holding myself accountable to any of this. I could change it. I could stop. We'll see. Um, ultimately I'm a mood reader. So when I finished one book, I really start to look at how am I feeling? What's piquing my interest? Uh, what's on my bookshelves? All of that good stuff. So that's it for me. I'm super excited for the holiday. Uh, an extra day of reading is always uh, a thrill for me. I finished all my laundry. My house is, is clean. So I am ready to go. I hope you have a good holiday if you're in the United States. Um, and and I hope you, if not, you're at least your week weekend of reading is goes well. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.